Alright, so here's the flyers. Here's a hundred of them. I took the other hundred to school and I'm passing them out. But um, if you would, if you would like, just uh, pause it at any point, scrolling down, and you can read through. But um, I don't want to waste time to show the whole thing for those who are not interested. But um, so that starts the vlog today. Let's get to work. So, uh, looks like the Monster Mud dried up pretty good. I mean, it's still a little wet and loose, but I mean, it's dry to the touch and pretty solid. So I'm probably going to wait, like, maybe two or three more days to fill, and then I'll fill in this with plastic and just spray it gray. Um, really sorry, guys, I couldn't show you a full Monster Mud cave, but all the important parts are good. Like, the entrance looks good, except for that little part, but who gives a crap about over there? I mean, the light in this scene is going to be directed there and over there I'll put like an LED or something so no one even if I left it the way it is now like I didn't even notice that I was looking at this thinking it was complete so um, just this little gap but I don't even think it's a big deal so I got all this ready yesterday but I just got tired um, so I didn't do it so I'm gonna paint this wall white and then paint the facade here and the back of this door white and um, or both of these doors white and then I'll go in um, once that dries distress it with black spray paint and then write um, exit stand back on the doors um, so that should be good all right so all this is painted um, I was just gonna go to here where the OSB ends and then just have a 2 by 3 come over into here and have like fabric flaps but I had a uh, paint in the tray and I didn't want to waste it so I figured I'd just paint these two um, all this is looking good this is plaster. Um, it's kind of hard to distinguish, which is good in here, because this is all paint, um, but all the other walls are plaster. I mean, you can tell when you look up close, but no one's going to be up close to this wall. So this wall doesn't, well, I mean, it matters, but it's mm, it, it it's the wall that matters least in this scene. So, And that was because I didn't have enough plaster. I would have liked to plaster it, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. And then after I did the plaster, I put in a door for egress here. It's a little shorter than two feet because it was the only one I had. And if I remember right, it's, I uh, cut it down last year because I had it in the closet. Oh, tripped over the ramp. But um, I had it in the closet hallway last year, so it had to be narrower than two foot because that hallway was narrower than two foot. But um, I'll just probably put on like a fence picket here or something like I have here or see if I can find something. Alright, so I painted this, uh, or paint washed this exit wall. Hard to see on camera, but this is the exit door. Top goes along there, seam goes down the middle. I just put a spool there to block it closed for now so you can uh, see. Um, that thing looks pretty good. That's on the other side of where I put in this one, um, just because there was a hole in that panel that I needed to cover. But I like that look where it covers the hole, like all around the edges. Um, so yeah, this uh, this facade looks pretty good. Nice exit piece. I just need to paint on that exit only sign, but um, yeah, that looks. Uh, I'm really happy with that look. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh, actually, a little while earlier, um, had dinner and then came out and did that. But before I did, I finished up putting this uh, these two fence pickets here by this uh, egress door. Got them just uh, nailed in. This one was broken up the middle, so I decided to kind of split it between everything just to kind of make it flow better and give it a cool look. So there's that. Um, also got an emergency exit sign on here, so that looks good. All right, so I'm in the slaughterhouse. There's the entrance. Um, brought in this fresh meat thing from last year. It fit this almost perfectly. Um, it was in the barbecue shack last year, but um, this looks really good. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it looks really bright and cheesy on camera um, with the light on it, um, but it looks really good. And plus, it'll give an actor a place to hide, like under the tables. And plus, now I can put like the fogger under the table and stuff. So I might fill this end in, but leave this back end open. So like an actor could be in there. We can keep the fogger in there too. Alright, so while I have the stool holding these doors shut, I thought I'd show what it looks like from the inside. Because they will be on bungees now, or <laughs> now. Eventually, I'll have them on bungees when we open, um, so they'll swing back closed. But um, right now, they hang open 
But um, that looks pretty good. I won't have the light on outside, so you won't be able to see light through them. Um, so this room will be pitch black, and then I'll have a strobe come on. And uh, I think this is just going to be super intense with the guy with the skill saw in here. Um, I have one um, cordless skill saw plus the one that's plugged in in the barbecue shack. So I'm going to, if, if it's not crowded, what I'll do is I'll have whoever's working that room, whether it's the guy who's also working the line, to also come out in um, back here in this set two and chase them come out of this door while they're walking on this first section ramp get them over the railing and then when they walk by get everyone through here and then chase the last person into there and then hopefully once like the second person goes in I'll be super explicit or if it's me you know I'll know um, but stop the saw so they feel the relief for just about two seconds and then I'll walk in there and then hit them again right as soon as the first person rounds this corner and that pairing is going to be super intense and then um, whoever's working here will go to the sewer um, but that's only if we can if we have a low enough turnout or just a slow enough time at that point in the night that we can have only one group in the haunt at a time so but fingers crossed that they're like hopefully the flow of people will be steady throughout the night rather than a ton at the beginning and then none in the middle and the end so um but <laughs> that's never how it is but all right see you guys later all right guys so i got a bucket in here i'm gonna try and find some more stuff to fill in this table but that'll be over time as i find the props i don't need in other areas but what i did do was um in here i got this cash register i'll talk more about that in a minute but i brought in the pants from last year bloodied them up all around them, did a little bit of the stuff where you spray the red in the cap and then toss it down, but that got out of hand and got on the floor and spray paint sticky so it wouldn't wipe up, so I had to stop that because I think, yeah, I went right in there and it cut all over the place. But the, oh shoot, gotta wipe off the cash register a little too, but this is an actual antique cash register, so that's pretty cool. So, yeah, all right, later guys. Alright guys, so I'm going to try my best to show the lights that we have so far inside of Charlie's. Um, keep in mind, the last scene's not anywhere close to done yet, so it's not lit yet. But everything else is very, very close to done or done. Um, there's just like two or three things in the whole, like, up until this last scene of Charlie's. Um, including this outdoor area. I, I think I'm just going to put one of the dome lights on the sign. Um, although I'll see because I don't know if it'll need it. In fact, let me put on the strobe in here in the barbecue shack. Give me a second. All right, so I'm just gonna start with the barbecue shack because that's pretty much lit too. Um, I turned off all the lights in the garage, so all I have is a flashlight now. So um, from my perspective, I can see that there's a sign to my right. If I look close, I can kind of read it. Um, the menu is lit up. Um, the torso is kind of lit up. You can see the Coca-Cola box pretty well. Um, these things on the wall too. And then um, the strobes looking good. Looking out the window, I can see the light coming from the first room in Charlie's. Um, you, it doesn't pick up on camera, but you can see like an eerie green glow. And then kind of the silhouette of that tree. Um, walking out here. Um, can see that there's trees around me. I mean, I can still see the ceiling of the shop, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, this looks like a garage door pretty good. Um, and yeah, I can't read the Charlie's Auto Repair thing, so I'm probably gonna put a light on it, um, which would be good. But overall, over in this corner, it looks good. Um, let me close the bathroom door, see how that looks. Yeah, bathroom door, bathroom looks just like another facade, so that's good. Going into this room, um, this guy looks good. This room's pretty well lit, um, which is kind of cool because it does have a lot of detail. It's one of the, it was pretty much the first scene that I detailed, um, and it was built right along with this scene as the first two scenes that were built. So, um, looking good. I really like this mask. That mask looks awesome. And then in here, I'm thinking I might actually move this prop because I don't think this scene needs it, A, and um, 
B, it's not lit up, and C, another scene could use it. Um, I'm not sure which. Probably the first room in Unearthed. But um, over here we have a red light shining down in there on the tools. Um, you can see in the mirror the light behind you. So that's kind of a light source too. Also in the microwave, I have a fading blue light. Um, if I have this door closed, which might be kind of cool, because they would have to figure out to actually open it. Um, but you can see... Well, it doesn't pick up on camera. There's a strobe on the other side that kind of flashes through the cracks. Um, I actually may not want to do this. I might even want to just scratch this prop up here. Um, honestly, it was thrown together really fast, and I could use the costuming. And because the strobe lights up the ceiling a lot, because the ceiling's like metallic insulation, so from the first scene, I could see that it was indoors. So... After I get done with this, I'll turn off the strobe and see if that helps the outside. And if so, then I'm just going to scrap that prop. Um, it, it's, it was a decent idea. It just wasn't done well because it was mounted right on the walls. But um, into this scene, I, it doesn't pick up anything at all. But there's a white finger light up there shining down on this guy. It casts a really nice, eerie shadow. Um, really dim and dark. I mean, you can see like that's... The joint on his leg and um yeah that's pretty much all you can see so let me turn off the strobe to if that helps in the first scene so it doesn't pick up on camera but without the strobe it really helps that you can't see uh up there it really feels more confined down here and if i put a light shining down on this it'll cast all the light down here and shadows up there which will be good um feels like you're lost somewhere in like a forest or something, which is very nice and creepy. Um, doesn't translate to camera, but it's creepy. All right guys, so I got this light on the Charlie's Auto sign. It was already blacked out a little bit with spray paint, but I went in there and really got it good, but it's hot, so like the spray paint was like sizzling on there. So, um, I, I think that's good though. This is the right amount of light I want. Um, I think especially with the strobe coming out of here, it should light everything. Well, you can't see where I'm pointing. Strobe coming out of the barbecue shack should light stuff up pretty good. Um, this is really nice in person, um, and everyone's going to see that and read it. Auto repair, um, so they'll know what they're walking into. Um, and it really, it doesn't show, even though there's a window right here, there's all this wall right behind there I can barely see that in real like when I turn the light off obviously I can see it now but over here pretty much yeah the same thing I mean I I can definitely see I'm glad I put this tree in because that really creates like a nice arch with the uh, branch going over the path so this is looking really good this doesn't have a switch right here um and I ran the line across the roof here you can't really see and then down there um yeah that white thing cord I can't fit my body in there but um, I can just unplug it at the extension cord, which is right along the side there. So that'll be good. Um, all right, so that's it for now, guys. Later. All right, guys, so I got this beam up here. Um, I'll, well, on the other side is the room, the first room in on Earth. The staircase is right on the other side of that wall. Um, the drop panel's right on the other side of here. And I tested jumping back into this wall, and it moved a little bit. So now I got it cross braced to these shelves, which are attached into the actual wall of the shop so it's definitely solid even with just one screw on each side it didn't move and i put two in um so let me take you over there show you what i got uh, going on over there um just a second um got the drop panel up just so i could see um it's basically braced like right in here brought this guy in um from the second room of the repair shop I think I mentioned that I'd rather put him somewhere more efficient because that room really the first two rooms in the repair shop are really well detailed with a lot of really small props everywhere which is uh, good and it's mainly an actor area where actors can just sprint through and terrorize the people and plus there's the other really good prop in the room right before so I brought it in um, got this barrel in here also got the drop panel up it doesn't really it does not draw attention to itself um, when it's up. Um, and this one's loud too, so this is gonna be a great scare. Hopefully, I mean, I might move this barrel somewhere just so, just in case. Well, actually, I might want to move this prop too, in case people jump back into it. I don't want it to break. 
So I might play around with placement in here. Plus, if I were to put it over here, they'd be looking at it, which would be a good distraction. Aha! Uh -huh. Hunter thought process right there. Um, so I'm going to figure something out, but um, this drop panel does not draw attention to itself with the staircase and with some sort of prop over here. Um, I originally wanted to do a furnace. I'm not going to do that. I don't have time. Um, so let me show you the drop panel. So yeah, that is really loud. That'll be a great actor scare as long as they can remember to use it right. Um, so really the two scenes that need the most work done are actually this scene um, is one of them. These shelves, what I'm actually going to do is bring in old wood and just scrap wood and pile it on there because sometimes people have that in their basements and stuff. Um, plus, I don't have any other props and stuff. I gotta get a mask on this guy or somehow finish him and make it look more realistic. Um, gotta paint on these whole cover things. Um, you can't see on camera. Let, let me go get the flashlight. Um, you can't see on camera, but they're um, not all black. The one is mostly black, um, but I need to touch up around the edges and then get these two. Um, and then this is supposed to look like a walk-in closet, so I gotta have some clothes hanging. I got this old broomstick, I'm gonna like, use it as a rod and just have a few clothes hanging that the actor can pop out through and probably have them hanging closer to um, the guest side rather than back over on the drop panel side because the actor needs space to do the drop panel. So maybe just something right across here. Um, but yeah. Um, although that's actually not a ton of work. That's not as much as I thought. But the main scene that needs the most work done is the garage. Um, what I have to do in here is I have to completely cover this because if you don't remember when I screwed the, this is the garage door, when I screwed these little strips on, um, and the screws poked through a little bit. There's no way to avoid that. So I gotta cover this and then paint it. I'm not doing the prop car. I don't know if I've said this on video or just in comments, but I do not have time to finish the prop car. Really sorry guys, I got a bit of hype going up about it at some point. Um, but I'm gonna have to turn the, I don't have time, so I'm gonna turn this into a workbench. I'm gonna basically make this level the tabletop and then just uh, sheet the front of it, sheet the top of it, and then paint it like gray or something. Um, and then maybe distress age the pegboard and then roof it. Um, so the main two things are cover garage door and make workbench. Um, other than that, there's really not a lot to be done. Um, this scene's one of the ones that need like a medium amount of work done. I have to put a, something in here to cover this. Gotta get the door in here. I'll probably just screw the door in and make this like a little access way to get back there or not even worry about getting back there. Um, it would be nice to hinge the door, but it's really heavy. It takes three hinges to hold it up and this thing's not the most sturdy thing. I mean, it it's staying up, but I don't want something really heavy on there and I'll probably brace this side too. Um, so it needs some work in here. So I kind of want to put the thing extending this down to there just a little bit so people don't step off the higher edge of that. Um, slaughterhouse could run the way it is. I just need to do um, hook up that strobe and hook up the fog machine. Um, but it would be nice to get a few more details in here. Um, I do just have to put the piece of plywood on here. Going backwards. The barn, all I have to do is just put actor flaps into this cove and then finish props on this table. Um, the facade needs a lot of work done. I'll probably do that Friday. I'll save that for Friday. Get everything, hopefully everything else done by Thursday. Um, and then have the facade and line on Friday and that's it. And I have off from school on Friday. So I have an early release on Thursday too. Um, let, let me go through unearthed after this room um and the repair shop rooms i didn't show are pretty much close enough to done maybe 10 minutes each honestly um so this room could run the way it is i would like to secure this maybe put something gory over here if i have time to make it maybe something with great stuff or something um slot hallway is done washroom is done except for just finishing this spot on the cave with just black plastic and then painting it gray. Same with up in here, gotta just paint it gray. And then in here, you would think this has a lot of work to do, but it really doesn't. Um, 
All, literally, all I have to do in here, have to, I mean, I could embellish it too, is just bungee the door shut, and then have dripping, paint the top pipe, and then have dripping rust coming down. I'm not gonna, like, go around and distress all the walls in here. Oh, and a door swinging in. A door that swings in and bungees closed. But that's really not that much. Um, I, I think that covers everything. So there's not a ton to be done, but it's enough to be a little bit worried. Oh, and I put up this exit thing a little while ago. Which, eh, looks pretty good. So, yeah. Alright, sounds good. Alright. Um, wow. I've been vlogging for 7 minutes and 12 seconds, so I gotta, I'm gonna try and get a little more work on tonight, and then call it quits. And then, yeah. Alright, later guys. Alright, so here's the slaughterhouse. Put this uh, piece of fake wood paneling up here. Kind of hard to see. Um, but, yeah, that's the fake wood paneling, like, from the, uh, one room. Or from the cellar, really, and from the one room in Charlie's. But so that's good. That really covers it up nice. And this on the front too really fills it in. It makes it feel more like a deli counter and less like just a random table. Okay, so I'm up on these shelves. I was up to get um, this air hammer. It was in that box. I had a feeling it would be in there, so I came up, found it up here. Um, but just thought I'd show a view of the haunts. Here's unearthed. Um, here, let me set that down. Um, there you can kind of see the framework that's the doorway in um, kind of see the ridge there that defines along the actor cove first room right about where that is ruffled there that's the division between there and the sewer because when I put the sewer on I couldn't get on this side to stretch it out fully but it doesn't matter um, and go in bedroom is there um, that's the actor cove with the slat drop right about there door room is right about there slat hallway washroom, then of course the cave, and the sewer. Um, over here, I mean, you guys know Charlie's, I've done a view from here before. There's the garage, um, thing over there, you can see all the trees in the barbecue shack. And then way back, let me zoom in, it'll be a little wobbly, but that is the shack that yesterday I put the roof peak on, on the other side of the barbecue shack. So just to kind of give an idea of the shop, um, better idea of where things are hopefully that helps out um, but big space all right guys so here in the barn just got a few more tubs just two of the plaster tubs in here and then I got up flaps covering the uh, entrance to the actor cove so it's black plastic and then fabric I do the plastic on the actor coves just because they usually lead to black to backstage areas um, so the fabric flaps alone wouldn't be enough to like cover it up because I mean, if it were just the fabric, I mean, well, take away the that, you can see through it enough that people would be able to see that, and it would just, you know, look more unprofessional than black plastic would. That makes sense. Um, so I, I think I'm gonna call it a night tonight. It's like 9:30. Um, gotta head in. I, I'm feeling good about the progress. I think we're definitely gonna get it done, or I am. But I don't know why I said we, but. I'm definitely going to get it done in time, so i um, feeling good. There may be a few things I have to skimp on, like, you know, the prop car, but no big deal. I mean, overall, it's a good haunt this year, so, um, and I'm happy with it, so. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to head in. I have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then if I need it, Friday, so four more days. Um, one of those is a full day, Thursday is a half day. Um, the other days are just when I come from home from school at, like, 3.30, so. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow for sure. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get these vlogs up pretty like soon after the days instead of waiting like a week to get them up. But um, Alright, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.